Susanna Huff agrees. She's been opposing gun control for over 20 years, saying it does nothing to keep innocent people safer. And she knows firsthand what it's like to be in the presence of a madman with a firearm. I didn't grow up in a house with guns. I don't hunt. I personally abhor hunting. But I was given a gun by a friend when I was 21 to carry in my purse for self-defense, and I was taught how to use it. A couple of years ago, my parents and I went to a cafeteria in Texas on a bright sunny day. We weren't in a dark alley where we weren't supposed to be. That was Susanna Hupp testifying at a U.S. congressional hearing almost two decades ago. And that bright sunny day was October 16, 1991, when a man drove his pickup truck through the window of Luby's Cafeteria in Colleen, Texas, and began firing. It took me a good 45 seconds to realize that this man wasn't there to commit a robbery. He wasn't there for a hit. He was there to simply shoot as many people as he possibly could. But Susanna did have a gun with her that day. When I finally realized what was occurring, I thought, I got him. And I reached for my purse. He was maybe 12 feet away. You know, is it possible my gun could have jammed? Sure. Is it possible I could have missed? Sure. But I can tell you I've hit much smaller targets at much greater distances. But then I realized that a couple of months earlier I had made the stupidest decision of my life. I took my gun out of my purse and left it in my car. Because as you well know, in the state of Texas, it's sometimes a felony offense to carry a gun in your purse. The gunman shot 42 people and killed 23 before turning the gun on himself once confronted by police. Susanna Hupp's father, Al, and her mother, Susie, were both shot and killed that day. The law prevented her from possibly saving her parents' lives, and as she told Congress... I'm not really mad at the guy that did this, and I'm certainly not mad at the guns that did this. They didn't walk in there by themselves and pull their own triggers. The guy that did it was a, a, a lunatic. That's like being mad at a, a rabid dog. I'm mad at my legislators for legislating me out of the right to protect myself and my family. Joining me now is Susanna Hubbs. Susanna's book is called From Lubies to the Legislature, One Woman's Fight Against Gun Control. Susanna, thank you for joining me today. And I want to ask you, uh, you. about the situation that day at Lubies. Next door, there were a number of police officers attending a conference. They had to go to their cars, unlock their weapons, in order to go in and, and to try to stop the shooter. When they got into Luby's, tell me specifically what they told you they saw in relation to what happened to your parents. Well, actually, a number of the officers were patients of mine, and they took uh, me and part of my family to lunch about a week later and told me that when they actually entered the building, they didn't know who the shooter was, but they did see a woman out in the aisle cradling what uh, appeared to be a mortally wounded man. And they saw a 30-something year old man walk up to her, put a gun to her head. They said she looked up at him, put her head down, and he pulled the trigger. My parents had just had their 47th wedding anniversary, and as I was running, it didn't occur to me that my mom wasn't going anywhere without my dad. You know, Susanna, when I think about your own feelings as you testified before Congress, you had a gun in the car. You didn't take it in with you because at that time, Texas did not allow you to. It essentially was a gun-free zone. Tell me what you Absolutely. think about gun-free zones. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's almost hard for me to talk about it because it seems so painfully clear that all of these mass shootings occur at places where guns aren't allowed. Um, these, these lunatics want to rack up high body bag counts, so they don't go to gun shows, they don't go to NRA conventions or, or places where hunters are gathering. They go where the government has said, you can't protect yourself. And it frustrates me because I have children in school. Um, I work at sometimes at places where guns aren't allowed, and, and it puts me in the position of either flagrantly ignoring the law or uh, obeying the law and putting myself at risk. Right now, the president, the vice president, Senator Feinstein and others are proposing that we really crack down on people who own guns and the uh, capacity of magazines. I mean, you face this firsthand with your own family. Tell me what you think about the proposals, whether you think they're going to be helpful to people like you, or if you think it's going to be more dis or, or advantageous to the criminal rather than to, uh, to people like you. 
they're a joke. The only thing that gun laws like that do is prevent people like me from being able to protect ourselves. They do not affect people who are bent on doing harm in any way, shape, or form. So I find it very um, frustrating when they use such a horrible event as what happened in Connecticut to try and go after guns that frankly, this is another one of my frustrations is that these so-called assault weapons, when you talk to the average person on the street, they think they mean rapid fire weapons. And you and I know that those rapid fire weapons have been illegal in this country since the 1930s. So they've just taken yeah. a class of guns and renamed them so that people are afraid of them. But they don't shoot any differently than what I own. So yeah, I don't want them to go in and try to ban those. There's no logic at all. do you think... If there were a little logic, yeah. I'd be okay with it. No, I, I think that's, that's exactly what's troubling to so many of us, is that this isn't a rational, thoughtful process. But to apply to your situation, do you think your parents would be alive today had that gun been in your purse instead of out in your car in the parking lot? I get that question frequently. I can tell you that... You know, it's, it's so hard to second guess, of course, uh, or to armchair quarterback it. All I can tell you is that it would have made a difference. Um, as it is, we were like fish in a barrel. And the police officers told me that all they had to do was fire a shot into the ceiling. And this guy immediately rabbited to a back bathroom alcove area and exchanged a little gunfire with the police and then put a bullet in his own head. Um, th again, I think for the most part, these people are looking for easy pickings. And, and you know, so many experts have made the same comment that once their bubble is burst and they no longer believe that they have total control of the shooting situation, they usually end up freezing or killing themselves on the spot because uh, their fantasy of, of the shooting gallery has, has ended. Uh, Susanna, I, I'm so That's sorry exactly for the right. tragedy you experienced so many years ago, but your courage in coming forward and telling your personal perspective I hope will be heard as this uh, issue is debated on the national level. Thank you very much. That's, that's why I wrote that book, and I hope the word gets out to a lot of people. Susanna Hupp, thank you so much for joining us today.